Hi guys, thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. My name is Catherine and I tell true stories. This time around, I'm going to tell stories about what is happening to the women in Kenya. And uh, at this rate, do you think that the women in Kenya should be equipped with weapons? Should the women in Kenya be allowed to walk around with uh, pistols, uh, paper sprays as a weapon of protection? Or should the Kenyan women be given a bodyguard? Sarah Wairuri was a very poor woman living in uh, Othaya, a place in Kenya called Othaya. A 47-year-old poor woman. She was so poor, she was living in a mud house that was already breaking down. No roof, leaking roofs, and she had eight kids. And she did not have the man of the kids staying with her. Out of those eight kids, one of the kids had a child, and so, plus a grandchild to take care of. And then, some sorry feeling person saw her after her case was uh, publicized about her poverty and she came out to help this Wairimo, this Sarah Wairuri rather, not Wairimo. She came out to help Sarah Wairuri. She built for her from a mud house, at least she made for her a wooden house, at least comfortable. She bought her furniture. She, she, you know, bought the bedding for the kids. And at least the woman was now more comfortable. She built her a 3,000 liter tank. And before there was no water in that village. And guess what? She also bought her a goat to produce milk for her. Then, on uh, on 21st of January 2024, this is this year, Sarah Wairuri goes missing. Sarah Wairuri wakes up in the morning, goes and sees neighbors, sees some friends, and then never comes back, never to be seen again. And you know what? Before she disappears, her got disappears. And then she follows. Sarah Wairuri was a very generous lady in that she let the neighbors who had no water come and fetch water from her tank that was built for her by well wishes. And the problem is we don't know whether it's jealousy from the neighbors, as in why did they choose only to help her? not their neighbors around, assuming that could have been the cause of the murder? Or was it some sort of land dispute? Somebody wants to murder her and take over the land, grab the land? What exactly was the cause of this? Was it femicide? Like what is going on around in Kenya? Neighbors noticed a foul smell coming from around the tank. Actually, it's a kid who noticed, not adult, that the tank was producing a very foul smell when she'd gone to fetch water, and the water was producing foam. And guess what they found when they checked? When they looked through the tank, into the tank, they saw Sarah's clothes floating and with the foul smell, they had to find out what was underneath. And guess what? To the astonishment, it was Sarah's body. Sarah was dead and she'd been in that tank that they had been fetching water from. Her body was decaying in the same tank that they were drinking water from. And... The daughter says that on the same day that Sarah, her mother, disappeared, there was a stool next to the tank. A stool meaning that she climbed up 
or whoever put her inside climbed up and pushed her body inside. The opening of the tank is so small that if she tried to jump in, she couldn't have actually fitted in unless somebody forced her in. And that automatically turns into a murder case. Sarah Wairuri was murdered. You don't know by who? Maybe by a neighbor. And if it's a neighbor and he'd been drinking that water, then he's really evil. I mean, you wouldn't think of where he was depos depos de dis depositing the body, disposing the body. You kill and you dispose of the body into the water tank. Probably it was somebody who doesn't live there. Otherwise, they will know that they are going to use that water as well. And why did they steal her sheep, her goat rather? It means it's out of jealousy. That is one woman gone. This is January. 22nd of January. This is a Tuesday. Another case. A woman in Gatundu found murdered by the road. Dumped just like that. With her left breast missing. Virtualist. Or probably it has just become... I don't know what to call it. Malice, malice. Just killing because you heard some women are dying. And so some psychopath has come up with this, you know, pleasure of just killing for the sake of adventure or just, I don't know. It's just women being targeted. Women in Kenya are being killed. This is just one part of. The country at the moment, central or only, these are the discovered bodies. Not forgetting the lady who was just murdered and body parts taken out. You can watch in my other video. Rita, Rita Waini was murdered. And her body parts taken away, her head taken away, her nails slapped off. Another lady again, thrown off some floors, pushed off some floor, landed on the ground and she was pregnant by another man. What is going on in the country? Are Kenyan women supposed to be equipped with uh, guns? Machetes. Now it's just worrying like if you call your lady friend and she doesn't answer the phone or you call your daughter and she doesn't answer your phone, immediately you will be worried. Maybe she's just busy doing something else, she just hasn't seen the call. But now you can imagine what is what is being instilled in people's heads, minds, anytime you will not be able to answer your call. Probably you've been killed. It's better to be alert anyway. Better to be alert. It's pathetic. Pathetic. There was a time I was staying uh, at a relative's and uh, I went to stay at the relative's for just one night and uh, the neighbors I could hear like from 3 a.m. up to 6 a.m. in the morning, the woman was being clobbered by the man. As in from 3, three to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 3 hours of How do you fight for 3 hours? Even a football match is that is not that long. But you will fight a woman for three good hours non-stop. And I will hear the walls being hit. Boom! What the hell was he using? As in was he knocking her on the wall until it tatters? 
It's not that the house was made with weak material, but you will hear the thud of a woman. And the woman was screaming at him. I hate you, you know, hate you. She meant it from her heart. I mean, I mean, if you're being, this is what happens every night. Why wouldn't you hate this person? And then, in the morning, she will meet her in the corridor. She will be putting on a smile, trying to hide the life that she's leading back in her house. I think people should seek help when they are living in domestic violence. Just for the sake of show, you are trying to show that you are happy and you're suffering. Just for the public. And this is how women end up being killed by their husband. Because they want to show, paint a picture of a happy family. And inside they're really dying. Inside is like a happy family. What is this? Women being murdered all over the country. And as I said, I am sure these are not the only cases. Now, some ritualists are even coming out and confessing that they are past ritualists and how they used to cheat women or hang out with ritualists, drug them and, you know, molest them in their drunken state. You can imagine. Somebody comes out proudly online and now starts announcing what they used to do. I think like people should be arrested. They have confessed their crime. They are criminals. So he's telling you, I did this and this. I used to do this and this to the women, drug them, do that. Arrest that guy. What is all this? Or give the women guns. Now, Walking alone is just going to be scary if you see a man behind you. These are the people supposed to protect the women, but they're the people harming them, killing them. What is going on in the country of Kenya? One guy by the name Jaden, I think he has a YouTube channel and he's a policeman. I don't know whether Jaden is his YouTube name or it's his real name. He was uh, suggesting that the women should actually stop dating foreigners because at least it will make it easier for the police to trust the person if they're murdered. Otherwise, you're murdered by a foreigner. Where are they going to start chasing this person? He murders you, he takes your organs and leaves the country. Takes your kid. But how do they pass with this thing to the app? I... There should be some syndicate some connection everywhere because this is how corruption happens just like how did the al-qaeda manage to pass their their bomb into the country although it was not um, assembled yet of course the equipment they were carrying could have caused suspicious suspicion at the airport but because of corruption people were paid 13 million per person just to let this equipment to be brought into the country and it was assembled for months in some residential, Mudaiga residence, before it was brought to blow up the American embassy, which ended up killing more Kenyans than Americans. Same thing could be happening at the airport. People are carrying organs, but how they are passing is a mystery. How a guy orders for equipment online without any question. A guy delivers and doesn't question. Deliver a soul. What are you asking these things for? At least they should track these delivery places and find out who the hell was this? Who bought these items? People not taking people's identities just because of greed. This Kenya is pathetic. The security is less now. I mean, we are not having people from outside killing us, but we are having people within us killing us. They are already living in the country. So how are we going to protect ourselves? Are we supposed to be given weapons? 
Are women supposed to be licensed to carry pistols? Unfortunately, no, because the rate of corruption will make them also start lending out this equipment for crimes to be committed and they're being so that they get paid. Can we blame it on the economy of Kenya then? I don't know. Well, if you like my content, like, share, and subscribe. Let's protect our women in Kenya. Ciao.